Hello. Welcome to the uh, community operations uh, workshop here. You're going to be stuck in a room with me and Sumantro for 90 minutes. Uh, but before we, before we get you into the trap, uh, we'll do some quick introductions. Uh, I'm Justin. Many of you were just here in the last session. Thanks for coming back. If you haven't seen me, uh, I work at Red Hat as the Fedora community architect. I joined Red Hat about, about a year ago, but I've been in the Fedora community for, for eight years or so. And one of the very earliest things that I did in the Fedora community with the, the first Fedora community architect, uh, Ramita Cosmaker, was launch a community operations team, often shortened to ComOps, uh, which was a team of kind of uh, people who did this interesting work of working across multiple teams and kind of were connectors in the community. And that was eight years ago. A lot of things have changed in eight years. But part of uh, what we're wanting to do today is to restart that conversation. So I'm looking forward to, uh, we'll have some, some activities planned, some discussion as well. But I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you around this idea and getting your feedback too. Uh, so I'm Shumantro. Most of you know me as Shumantro M over IRC. I work for the Fedora QA team, but since last seven years or so, I used to work for or rather assist few of the ComOps members. One of them I would highly name as Sachin Kamath. If you have ever seen him um, on IRC, you know who he is. Um, so most of these guys used to develop matrices and data points and crunch numbers. And I was more interested into that thing to get community matrix to have an understanding of how the quality of life of a contributor in Fedora would go about. And ComOps was one of my very starting points. So I am here to uh, start this conversation and gather feedbacks. So I think to kick things off, we're going to do another sticky note activity, if you were just in here in the last session. And uh, yes, I have got the pad here. I know you all already have pens. If you want to go and distribute those out, I'm going to deviate from our playbook a little bit here because I realize there's a question that I'm. Let's do like well, we might use them again, so you can give like three or four per person. Um, we can always share more if we need to. But the question that I'm going to pose to you all is: when you think of community operations. What things come to mind for you? What does this term, what do you think this, this kind of work in open source community looks like? So you can write it all on one sticky note. You can write different things on multiple sticky notes. Format is totally up to you. Uh, but we'll take, let's see, so it is 11.08 now. We will come back around 11.13, 14 or so. And then we'll have everyone come and put their sticky notes up here in the front. And we'll take a look at what, what do people think community operations is, and what does it mean? Yes, so we're, all we're doing is, what do you think community operations is in an open source project? What, do these, what does someone who does ComOps do? Or what does this team, what kind of tasks do you think or um, give us your feedback? When you hear community operations, what do you think of? So we'll take five minutes, we'll come back around 11, 13, 14, or when everyone looks like they're done writing.
sticky notes, you can come to the front and put them up here. And in a minute, or in a few minutes, we'll start to do some groupings. I'm <laughs> All right, do we have anyone? We got one more person coming up. Anyone else have some sticky notes left? Written ones. <laughs> If you'll bear with me, I am going to read through some of these just for the benefit of our, uh, our virtual folks who are here and to help me remember when I look back at this recording in two months. Uh, so what we have up here, some of the things people wrote, what is community operations? What do you think of when you, when you hear that? Uh, there's definitely some common ones, care and nurturing of the community. So I think generally like community health and well-being is something I'm, I'm hearing a lot, health and belonging in the community. Mm. And on that same one, ensuring member safety. This might fit into this one. Creating spaces for community discussion and interaction, kind of community health one, having safe places for, uh, spaces for discussion. Contributor journey, kind of in that. I don't know, I, might, I think that one might be different. Like, how do people move through the project? I, that's, that's what I think of with that one. I don't know who wrote that one, but maybe they feel different. Uh, we have organized the community. Oh. Have inclusion programs, code of conduct, and maintaining harmony in the community. Some, I think, are kind of on their own. Okay, so under the contributor journey, we have supports community members who are getting started in the project, technical and resources, et cetera. Uh, communication, transparency and coordination of community goals. I'd say that's kind of in the contributor journey, newcomer support bucket on the right side. Oh, so also in the care and nurturing of community, create, I think that one would fit here. So we have one for creating and updating governance processes. And under that, we have some that are infrastructure, oh, this one's a lot of them, infrastructure, contributor user experience, politics and diplomacy, sociology and group dynamics, swag and funding, governance, partnering with bigger contributors. I might leave that one on its own. <laughs> no, those are all good things, but uh, it covers a lot of the different. Uh, let's put, no, let's put this one. I think that's a new, new category here. So you've got building and maintaining systems and workflows for the community releases, and also creating and updating governance processes. Maybe would organizing the community fit in this one, yeah. maybe? maybe. Yeah. Uh, events, I think, is its own bucket. That's one that's on its own. Same as statistics. I'd also put that on its own bucket. This is going to go here, this community <laughs> Community advocacy towards Red Hat, or maybe Red Hat advocacy towards community. 
So we'll put that in the events bucket for now. This was another multiple one. Yeah, statistics is its own. And one. Yes, we have uh, some great chaos representation in here. We were just talking in the last session about chaos, which is a community of practice around measuring and understanding community health and open source communities. They, do, they create metric definitions as well as create software to help people measure those metrics. Yeah, I almost grouped this one. It is kind of in that bucket, but I would group it. So we have one that manages chat platforms behind the scenes so people can meet and work with anyone in the community. And then this one that I really liked is the cement between the bricks or the oil that keeps the engine running. <laughs> I, I love that one, actually. So it's kind of in the care and nurturing of the community bucket. So it's statistics. Then identifying the needs that are common across communities and addressing them from that broader perspective. Kind of like, yeah, it's kind of in the middle of the care and nurturing and contributor journey one. And then I'm holding this one, coordinating projects across multiple teams and making connections, event planning and promotion, facilitating meetups and processes for teams and conflict resolution. I wanna put that on the other one with a lot of ideas. Okay, so check-ins with groups, follow-ups, establishing standard operating procedures or SOPs, finger posting, manned or unmanned. I don't know what that is. I don't know if anybody wants. Yeah, I, I said it. So basically, like, someone, you're, you're someone Directing people. I love that. So, fing so for the stream, finger posting is kind of a way of directing people through the community, like, oh, go over here for this thing, or over there, helping kind of help people. We're putting it in the contributor journey bucket here. And then also she had up here driving transparency and general give work. Glue work, glue work. No problem. Glue, glue work is an important one. I think that fits in yes. cement between the bricks, too. Stacks half and half. So let's see. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a lot. <laughs> so roughly six-ish groups that are up here. So I'm going to turn it back to the audience. As, I was, as we were reading these out and sorting them into different groups and buckets, did any of these things that you heard from other people surprise you? Or did this all just make sense when we were talking about it? It was all like, oh, yep, that sounds like ComOps community operations. Or uh, were there any, uh, anyone have like a surprise or thing that they, they didn't expect to hear when we were reading off these stickies? We'll do one and two. I kind of thought I'd hear more about advocacy and kind of the ambassador program kind of activities. And I didn't see that. And I was kind of surprised by that. So. Um, I had a couple questions I found myself asking because there's a lot of sort of organizing, uh, bringing people together, uh, these sort of things. And I kept on asking myself uh, to what ends, uh, on behalf of whom, in like these sort of questions, you know, because I think oftentimes it's like, well, what, what are we organizing for and mm -hmm. in whose interests and uh, like, yeah, so would you say it's like, who are the team members or who are the stakeholders of this team? How would you, how would you describe that? Uh, I would be like, um, who are like this team, who are they representing? Who are they mm. beholden to? What are the incentives that drive like their, their focus? Uh, coming from other organizing backgrounds, you know, it's mm. it's very different. You could think of something like human resources in a company versus maybe a union organizer. Oftentimes, have logistically very similar tasks, but uh, because of the nature of like where they're suited, s situated within their organization, have like very different goals. 
even though they're doing like practically very similar things. Not that like it maps directly here, but I found myself thinking about that. Yeah, those are good questions. In the back, yes. or yes, okay. <clears throat> So I was pleasantly surprised to hear when you said define what community operations means to you. To me, my I went to the very mechanical, technical, button pushing stuff. <laughs> so I was very surprised to hear how like how how much the soft skills come into this mm. particular function of the Fedora project. It's it's very nice to hear that that yes. that's focused very. Actually, I would say probably even higher than the the technical button pushing. <laughs> but that was that was all. Thanks for that. Anyone else? Surprises, observations, questions that you had when you were hearing these groupings? Someone, I suspect it might be Greg, um, someone said sociological. I would love uh, further expansion on that, please. All I really meant was that I've been reading a lot of books recently. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but seriously, there's a lot of study around um, online communities of all types, right? Not just software, but mm. uh, gaming, support groups, um, review sites, et cetera, and how they form and what we learn from that from psychology, sociology, economics, et cetera. And I'm finding it fascinating mm -hmm. <laughs> and putting a lot of it into practice. Uh, and so really, for me, think, getting a chance to think about that is one of the really great things about the job that I do within my communities in Red Hat, right? It's, it's really good fun. And it does help a lot. This is one of the things that I think is great about open source. You can go read a bunch of stuff and then be like, and, and learn a lot of things. And you're like, all right, let's build a team for this. Let's do it. So thanks for that. Any other observations, questions, or surprises? Uh, again, in the front here. I guess I was thinking more the like to expand on the who we are here to be for. Like if you think about like the funnel of people coming into Fedora, are we here to represent the you know post join sig kind of function, like keeping contributors in Fedora? Because I saw some of the comments were, you know, more around kind of users or you know bringing folks in, but it's kind of a unclear, I guess, as I look across it. Where do you sit in the contributor journey of mm. you coming into the project, you being you know mentored and and then being converted from you know a, just a, a new member into somebody who's doing you know actual uh, you know let's say packaging right or documentation or anything like that. Like where do you go in that funnel? So. Mm. The answer is yes. <laughs> so when I said care and nurturing, um, where in the journey do you see this? Is it once you're in, are you new? For me, care and nurturing is almost everything that's on that board because it doesn't start when someone joins and it doesn't really even end when someone leaves the project. So I'm unclear, I might just need explanation because um, I'm extremely jealous of Fedora's multiple teams of, of people doing stuff. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I don't always necessarily know where, uh, so from the perspective of uh, bringing in community members, um, I, I think maybe some of that, that, that outreach and talking to people before they're in might be part of uh, Mindshare for Fedora. Mm. Um, and I'm not clear on where the, I don't have those, uh, I don't have separate teams doing these different things, you know, within CentOS, so I'm not sure where, where, the, where the boundary is between these, these different kind of community-oriented uh, teams that you have. That's a great question, and I also want to know these things, too. <laughs> so I think, do we have any last ones before we'll, we have, I kind of got a three-prong approach here, which I'll, uh, I'm kind of, improvising a little bit here, but any last observations, groups about what is ComOps? Going once, going twice. So, okay. So I think what might, what I'm thinking might be helpful to kind of set the stage for the heart of this workshop, I think, is sharing a little bit on where is ComOps in the Fedora project today? How did it get there? And what we're thinking about now for rebooting this team. So I'm going to try and not put that one, but this one. So uh, I would be, it would be a, 
a shame for me not to uh, mention this amazing organization chart that was just updated by someone who I wish could have been here but was unable to. Uh, Marie Norden just updated this a month ago. So this is very fresh uh, since the last update it had in November. But this is our organization chart, uh, the map of the Fedora community. And uh, if you've never seen it before, you're probably feeling overwhelmed. That's, that's a pretty natural first uh, reaction. But uh, I, I do, quick question or? Oh, uh, a remark. Uh, remark. Did we get this at the default uh, wallpaper on Fedora? <laughs> <laughs> that would be, I, I would endorse that. Do we have, ah, we don't have a design team. Wait. Well, maybe, maybe for, <laughs> I'm not sure whether that was audible for the uh, remote audience. Uh, my suggestion yes. was uh, to have that as the default wallpaper in Fedora. It would be a cool wallpaper. Default, a cool wallpaper. I would use that wallpaper. So, uh, can you borrow the handheld for a minute? So, if you look at this chart, and maybe I should zoom in here. I, I always like, I don't know if other people feel this way, but I feel this way about the org chart is kind of a left brain, right brain way of thinking about it. So at a high level, how Fedora is structured, you have the Fedora Council as the top level leadership in the community. We also have two other leadership bodies that also play a significant role in the community. So on the, the left brain side, which you could say is the more engineering, probably more engineering side of Fedora, uh, at the top, the governance for that side of the community is the uh, Fedora Engineering Steering Committee, or FESCO. So these are the folks who review all the changes that are coming in from all these other places and little bubbles in the community. The FESCO is the group that reviews technical changes and kind of helps provide technical leadership around the direction of the distribution. And if we come over to the right side, to the right brain, we have what, for lack of a better term, I would say is like our non-engineering groups, although there is engineering work happening in some of those places, but more generally they're not usually code and software work. So uh, the Mindshare Committee, which if you were in our, our last session, we talked a lot about that, so I'm not going to harp on it too much here, uh, but it's kind of a, another, again, a, a decision-making body that kind of helps represent all these other bubbles and teams in the right side of the project and also helps manage a lot of our budget and spending priorities for, for the project. So this has changed recently uh, in the last couple of years. ConOps has moved, kind of moved around a bit in this chart, but in our current situation of where community operations exists, it's uh, one of the groups under the Mindshare Committee, so kind of like a SIG or a working group, I guess would be the parallel. And then the ambassadors, the advocate program, and the ambassador emeritus uh, groups are kind of a, a subgroup of community operations, which uh, nice, uh, nice concept, but I'm not sure if it has quite worked out that way because, again, if you're in the last session, ambassadors carries a lot of baggage in Fedora community. It comes with, because it's a group that's been around in Fedora for longer than ComOps was, 15, 16, 17 years ago. It, Ambassadors have been around for a while. Uh, and op operationally, it's, I mean, and I, I don't think in practice it's ever been under ComOps. I mean, maybe according to the org chart, but it hasn't been, really. Um, operationally, I mean, stuff just goes from ambassadors to Mindshare. So there was some restructuring work that happened in the last couple of years during COVID when we weren't really doing in-person events and travel. So we tried to, you know, there, there's been challenges in that, in these areas of trying to revive those groups even before COVID started. And, uh, you know, I think I'd still say it's a work in progress. There was a lot of great structure that was created in the last couple of years, but I don't think it's been fully realized or implemented. So that's where things are right now. But how did ComOps get up there in the first place? How did this team come to be? What's the origin story, Marvel Cinematic Universe origin story of uh, community operations? So, well, before I open the docs, I think the context here is that in 2015, uh, that was the year that we had the first, well, 
different title back then, but the Fedora Community Architect role was created at Red Hat to uh, try to take some things off of the Fedora project leader back when uh, he was doing a lot of, a lot, a lot of things. So it helped uh, diversify or spread out some of that work to be a little more balanced for the role. And the person who was the first community architect, Remy de Cosmaker, uh, kicked off the community operations team with the, he had this vision of heat, light, and love, which maybe I can pull that up because he went to Twitter later and uh, oh, I'm not gonna get twitter.com on this, but um, twitter.github.io. If I can hit it, that would be great, but I, I can't, yeah, move permanently, no support. Oh no, it's still here, amazing. I don't know, I, I would probably assume this is not the opera, operating procedure at Twitter today. But <laughs> X, yeah, you know, here we are, it's Twitter, so obviously. Um, but his vision that he put here for Twitter, he kind of actually built out in Fedora. And so the vision for this community operations team back in 2015 was to provide these three roles in the community, was to provide heat, which means work, upstream, you know, I, I will say this definition is a little more code focused, but I wouldn't limit your imagination to code on this. So he wrote here, it's like upstream contributions, bug fixes, designs, documentation, the rigorous work that drives the community. Light, which means visibility. So for the projects, contributions, opportunities, challenges, and people that impact the community, and love. That means culture and support, why we care, how we work, actions that grow the community. So ComOps was created as a team to help serve these goals in Fedora because if you looked at that org chart, there's a lot of stuff happening in Fedora all the time, every day. Nobody, I'd like to find the person who makes the claim that they know everything in Fedora. I don't even, I don't even think, Matt, yeah, Matthew's shaking his head here. So if you find someone, I'd, I'd like to meet them. Um, but ComOps was trying to fill this gap of like, okay, we have all these teams, everyone's doing all this work, but how are we coordinating it of like, oh, we have an ambassador going to an event, and then they would create a sticker sheet on their own with a local vendor, and then, you know, it's the weird, if you look at some of the older history of Fedora, there's some very funny looking Fedora colored logos, things that, you know, so the design team input maybe came too late, or they weren't even consulted, or there'd be people who were doing their own documentation, and could actually have been very useful for everyone else, but, you know, everyone's kind of, plugging away, doing their thing, and you might have a few of these people who are kind of doing the glue work, but there was no structure for these kind of people in the community. Well, there was a community working group that was actually before my time, but I don't know how successful they were with that either. So, uh, ComOps started with this, and some of the, the origin back in 2015, you know, coming back to what we just did with this exercise, well, what did we think ComOps was in 2015? We have these kind of high level concepts, but like, okay, let's drill down and actually think around what does this work mean? So in 2015, and 16 really, we developed, I'd say the five main buckets of things that ComOps focused on at the time. One of those things was culture, really trying to promote the community culture that exists in Fedora. That I think if you've spent much time at Flock this week, you hopefully have been feeling some of that feeling as well. But we have all the rest of the year that's not flock and making sure that we're sustaining that culture and people feel connected and uh, we're, we're all on the same page as like the values of our community, that's really important. So things that ComOps did, uh, we do interviews with Fedora community members about things they're working on or things that they're interested in. We launched the community blog in 2015 was, was ComOps that, that launched the, the community blog website that we have now. We did a Fedora Appreciation Week for the anniversary week of Fedora. We had a week where people could just go and reach out to their, uh, it could be a package maintainer or someone else you work with in the project. Users even came in to just say thank you and be like, hey, like, you're doing great work. Or you know, some people would be like, I love, you know, come and do very general, oh, Fedora's great. Or then there'd be people who would be like, oh, Kevin Finzi got my thing, my ticket fixed. Thanks, Kevin, for, you know, more individualized kind of feedback. So we built a structure for that for a whole week, you know, people coming in and, and really appreciating each other and calling out good things that people are doing. And then we also did a series, Top Badgers of the Year. So we'd look at the leaderboards of who the top five badge earners were in 2016 or 17, and then we'd interview them. How'd you get here? How did, uh, what have you been up to in Fedora? What's your story? 
another thing that ComOps did in the beginning was elections. So these days, uh, well, Ben Cotton had it down to a system. We did have some uh, bumps on the way in the last election or two, but even before Ben took that on, it was actually a, always been a community, there was election wranglers is what we used to call these people. And usually, uh, I think Ankur Sinha was usually the person who drove a lot of that. Someone else who couldn't be here from Flock, uh, even though he's been in Fedora for so long and he's literally just on the other island adjacent to us, but visas. But anyway, so we would help do some of the coverage. So we'd be doing interviews with folks, helping collect those interviews and publishing them on the community blog doing the infrastructure plumbing for the elections app, uh, and also just trying to you know, do automation for the calendar so everyone's like aware, like, hey, here's the deadlines, here's the expectations of what's gonna happen. The third bucket was storytelling. So, you know, I think it kind of goes close to the culture piece, but you know, being able to go out in the community and talk about like, hey, here's the things that we're doing as a project, as a community. Here's the things that we're caring about and making sure that people I would say this isn't as much of a outreach as it was an in-reach, trying to talk to other Fedora people about things happening in Fedora because it's huge, as you saw on the org chart. So things that we did back then was we interviewed, there was the Python 2, Python 3 migration back in the day, and there was the Python SIG was doing a mi mass migration of you know, trying to update Python 2 packages to Python 3. So we interviewed some of the maintainers for their hack fest that they were doing and how people could help. We did calls for nominations for the server working group when they were trying to find new chairs and new governance for the server working group. Uh, at Fedora o events where people would be going, like, I think this was FOSDEM specifically, we would do like a, an overview of like, hey, you're gonna go to FOSDEM. Here's the Fedora uh, report out of you know, all the things happening. Here's the Fedora content and sessions. Uh, we did help wanted columns. So say like, hey, you're trying to get help on something a community operations person would jump into your chat or hang out in a meeting, ask where you needed help, and then we'd do a column on, on the community blog. Like, hey, here's some things people are looking for help with right now in the community. I miss this one, but we used to do year in review uh, with different teams to help different teams create a structure like at the end of the year. What was marketing up to this year? What were ambassadors in, in, in EMEA doing that year? Um, what was community operations doing that year? The other one is metrics, which uh, I don't want to make this exclusively a metric session, but we have some really cool things in Fedora that most communities don't have. There's some age in some of those tools, but it's still really cool. We have this, if you don't know, uh, we have the Fedora messaging bus, which is this bus of activity. Every time someone does a contribution of some kind in the community, Again, leaning more on the engineering side of things. So like say a git commit or a package gets built or tested or uh, a comment is made on a pagor or GitHub issue that gets reflected into the messaging bus and we can query all those things and take a look at you know, what's happening in Fedora. So the ComOps team back in the day, we did a couple of things. Um, I'm gonna guess that first one, analyzing Fedora contributor activity. I promise we're not doing spying or uh, those things, but what we did was looking at, I think that was FOSDEM 2016. So we had uh, Bhagyashri Padalkar, who was doing this work at the time in ComOps, who looked at people who took the badge at FOSDEM 2016. And she looked, have these people who scanned the badge, have they ever shown up before? Or are they, are they newcomers who just showed up? And then what happened after FOSDEM? Did they go on to do other things in the community or did they drop off? She also looked at, uh, uh, at Flock 2016, she presented on the life cycle of a Fedora contributor, which uh, seven years ago, we found out that roughly 50 or 60% of people who came into the messaging bus would drop off after three months. Some people would be shorter, some people would continue on for a longer term, but at the time that, you know, that opened up other questions and things that were interesting of like, okay, well, why are people dropping off after three months? Is it that they, they hit a barrier or were they just trying to do one thing and they got it and they're done? Um, it opened up those deeper questions that we wouldn't have been able to ask without looking at it. Uh, there was also release party metrics back when we were doing more in-person release parties and the virtual end of things, kind of leaning on the badges end of stuff as well. Um, and I also have to mention, uh, 
Alberto BT0 from the Fedora Mexico community, who was also a big part of all the metrics work that we were doing at the time and has created some really cool scripts around geographic activity as well. So that was a big pillar of ComOps. And there were some key people who really drove and owned that and used our tools to tell interesting stories, feeding back to the storytelling piece. And then lastly, in 2015, what was ComOps? We, we wrote out supporting sub-projects or other teams, other SIGs. So that might have been like wiki gardening. We were working with the Fedora Join SIG. Um, we were helping Fedora Modularity get started back in the day. Uh, we helped the Fedora.net SIG launch when they were trying to get established, when .NET just went open source, and we wanted to get that onto Linux. And a handful of other things, like mentored projects. We did some of the plumbing for GSOC 2016-17. Uh, and so that was what we started off with. In practice, uh, people come and go, and uh, there were changes in, in the community, and, uh, you know, and also I think you know, we had a... The first founder, Remy de Cosmaker, left the role. Uh, Brian Exelbeard came into the role, and he had a, a different approach for it. And some of the the uh, the way that team functioned wasn't as documented. I think what happened was scope creep, kind of. You know, then people were like, "Oh, well, ComOps can do this. ComOps can do that." And suddenly, ComOps was doing all these things, and then the people slowly dwindled, and the team kind of. I won't say went away completely, but it's definitely not, it's, it kind of fizzled out after a while. And then COVID didn't help any of that either. So this is kind of the lay of the land eight years ago. And so why we're doing this workshop today and what we're gonna switch to here to have more of a discussion in a little bit is trying to reboot or revive this team in a sustainable way. Because even though, even if we don't do all of these things again, I still think there's a huge value in having a structured place where people can jump in and, you know, if you want to do storytelling, you want to talk to other people and help do that in reach, you know, making sure that other contributors are on the same page and, and uh, aligned, you know, I still think there's a place for this kind of work. So the last thing I'll mention here before we transition over is where, we're, where we've been at in the last couple of months. If you've seen on the Fedora discussion, We've had a conversation already for, uh, it was like June or like May or June that we kicked this off, um, trying to figure out like, well, what will this look like again? And if we try to revive this and reboot this team, what is it going to look like? We have a few folks who've already, uh, some folks who are also in the room who have uh, listed their interests. So the, the idea that I came out with the original proposal of well, what should ComOps be now? I, I put out there's three things, just three things that ComOps should, that I think ComOps should do today, which is again, the data science piece, coming back to that metrics part. I don't know what to call this one, but I'm leaning, I'm leaning into product operations. That's definitely not what I, uh, there's better, better things to describe it, but kind of that glue work that came up earlier, you know, being able to jump between multiple teams and to have a place where people who do that cross team work to connect and kind of be organized with how we do that. And then the storytelling piece, you know, all the old blog posts that we used to do, the interviews with other contributors and doing that kind of in-reach work. Uh, but what should ComOps not be? This time I was like, all right, we probably need to lay out some things that we're not going to do in this iteration. One of those is the community blog. Back in 2015, when we launched it, it was the ComOps people. I guess that did kind of fit under our storytelling thing at the time. Uh, the team managed it, and it was largely, I mean, it was a lot of me, I guess, but um, we, had a, we did have a team of editors there, and I think now with how the blog has evolved and changed, it's not a test, not an experiment anymore. The com blog is here to stay, but I don't think com ops should be the team to own the editing workflow for that anymore. Um, I think we've got other processes that work, and I don't want to undo that, the, the, pro the system that is working. The other one is app development, I which... I'm going to stop on that one. The system right now is Ben is doing it. That's not a sustainable system. Um, a comment from Matthew that right now Ben Cotton is doing the com blog. Which is, I mean, it's not... The challenge is that we'd still probably need to have a team. It is a one person. Rand, do you want... Yeah, that's a, just a one person thing. So com blog still probably needs some love and attention. 
Yeah, so one thing we could actually do is call for editors. We actually did not ever do that, right? But I, I'm sure, like, I am one of the editors of Comblog, so I keep publishing m my own stuff. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, I. So, uh, but yeah, if we actually call for editors, I think there would be people who would show up and then we can do something. Yeah. And then the last thing, coming back to why the ambassadors were kind of boiled up under ComOps, I actually don't think community operations should own ambassadors. Whether it's its own thing or it's somewhere else, it's an. It's, Still a good discussion. Uh, so, a little bit of history. In the last uh, about one year during COVID, we kind of launched this revamp operation to get ambassadors somewhere, um, somewhere from a dormant phase. So we actually phased out most of the information that was necess unnecessary, not there would not ever be updated and was mostly bit rotting. We kind of took care of that, moved everything to this docs, uh, shiny page um, on the, in the website. But we decided to move ambassadors under ComOps and that was not a very great way to start things. So uh, I guess, yeah, we would not want to have that there at all. If you were in the last session, you know that that's still something we need to fix, but probably not in the scope of at least this session and what we're trying to drive here. So that was a lot of talking and, and history lesson. Hopefully didn't put, well, okay, I don't need to sleep, just making sure. Um, but just wanna see before we kind of transition to a more interactive part and thinking around what people are interested or, or would be like to see from a, a new revived ComOps, are there any questions or comments people want to add in I see two here. We'll start with Robert. So kind of going back to earlier, I, I think the, you know, and especially going to some of the sticky notes, I think there's maybe, again, some confusion of is community operations more inward facing into Fedora or is it outward facing and outside of Fedora, right? Because I think there's a lot of, um, and there's a lot of overlap, right? Because it's, it's that funnel of getting new contributors in, in some cases, is events, right? Awareness and things like that. But I think also at the same point, the bridge of bringing everyone together is kind of also what community ops does too, so. Yes, and ComOps is not Fedora marketing and uh, will not, would not you know, take over that work either. And I think that's a very clear distinction because the marketing team and Joseph are doing awesome things and we don't want to feel like we're taking that away from them. You know, it, it's, I, I see it as different work. Uh, in the back. Um, did we not just find the uh, distinguishing part between the ambassadors and the uh, comops? Uh, comops uh, looking inside, ambassadors looking outside. Say, so, like, um, to elaborate, uh, ambassadors are, are there to uh, promote uh, uh, Fedora, to uh, get the word out uh, on Fedora, to uh, get uh, get get people from who are not part of the community yet uh, to, to, to join Fedora, whereas uh, ComOps would uh, uh, um, look more to, uh, the com um, to the inside of the community and help them to uh, uh, collaborate. Mm. I actually would be curious for Sumantro to take that one and get his take on that. All right, so I guess my quick comment there is I feel like it's tricky with ambassadors because on one hand, yes, like going out to events, doing kind of the outreach arm of talking to the pub general public and open source world about Fedora. But I also have seen ambassadors do this role of doing kind of that inward stuff. I don't know if we have any of the Fedora Mexico. I don't see any of those folks here now, but they do a lot of like, I mean, in one hand, maybe it is kind of that out outreach, but they do a lot of like community building in their, in their region. In, I always get the idea that my voice is uh, hard enough uh, to be heard, but um, it's more the definition part uh, that I'm after. It, I mean, it doesn't prevent you to be an ambassador and be part of the ComOps team at the same time. Uh, 
Mm. But the definition part would be um, um, ambassadors are focused on uh, um, uh, spreading the word, whereas comops would be uh, enabling uh, ambassadors or enabling uh, parts of the communities uh, to get uh, uh, stuff done. Mm. And uh, it's, it's more the definition part I was looking at. Not that you cannot mm. be part of both or that there is no interaction, but the definition part for me would be ambassadors are looking uh, outside, they are spreading the word, and the comops team would be uh, looking at the inside, where do you need help, what, we can, uh, uh, what can we do for you to uh, improve the situation? That's what I was uh, thinking of. Yeah, I think that's, that's a fair assessment. So... One thing that I would always add to this, and this came up multiple times, this exact same definition came up multiple times. Oh, so basically... Uh, I want to see you on the camera. Yeah, so basically, I, I, all I wanted to specifically point out is, see, ambassadors are, they belong from the federal project on multiple teams, right? So think about it like if I am an amb ambassador and I work for the QA team, so I basically have some working knowledge of what QA does. Right, so when I go around and do advocacy, and that's probably the next part of our talk, which is Fedora Advocates, that was created to basically do advocacy for Fedora. And most importantly, uh, do advocacy in such a way that we could get and retain contributors to a specific part of Fedora. So if you're good at, let's say, design, you would onboard somebody to design team, and you would help them maintain that retention period. And that would drive or help comops uh, get the matrix out to understand if that is what a contributor sustainability story would look like for us. Yeah, that, that's, that's one of those things. Yeah, so I, I, I like the idea of making, I think it makes a clear line, both with the marketing and ambassadors and all those things, to say ComOps is internally focused. Mm. Um, that might include supporting teams in their externally focused roles, and you know, yep. things are fluid. There's no like, you can't talk to someone <laughs> who's not part of the project yet, you're in ComOps. Um, but I think, yeah, as part of that, I think it might make sense to move the ComOps bubble from underneath Mindshare to actually directly under the council. I think we talked about this a little bit before as well, mm. um, because it's something that is supposed to operate on both sides of that project. Yeah. And, um, and, and you know, part of the reason Mindshare exists as a thing is because previously everything on you know, the left side there, the uh, in engineering side basically, uh, was connected up through FESCO, at least nominally, um, whereas all the other groups were just kind of bubbles floating around the project and it didn't feel like there was a, uh, a place to connect. And so that's kind of where the idea of, um, it was originally outreach and then Mindshare and ComOps kind of grew out of that. So that, that's why there's a thing there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that's, you know, that it's had, it's had its own challenges, but I think ComOps doesn't fit under that, and I think moving it to council and making the whole org chart get redrawn is probably the best mm. thing. Should kind of match the like the program. It made John make a very confused looking face, so that's, I want to hear what that's about. Okay. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> 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 All right, um, I guess. And I feel like I'm going to derail the current conversation, so please feel free to jump back in. But like, um, I guess my question is, like, what's what's the point of this reorganization, right? Is because I'm I'm hearing a lot of different discussions. You know, some of it feels like it's like, well, you know, ComOps doesn't have enough capacity to do these sort of tasks, and we want to move them into some other part of the community or organization that we feel might have more capacity to do these things, you know, like maybe mm -hmm. the blog or something. Some of it uh, feels like maybe because we're situated here within the organization, we don't have as much easy access to groups in other parts of the organization, so maybe we should move somewhere, or like we don't have the capability to standardize certain processes across these groups. And then, you know, and this is, Purely like, I'm not saying it is or it isn't, but some of it might feel like just kind of organizational bike shedding, where it's like, well, you know, are we going to be like uh, this color or that color? You know, are we internal or external or that sort of stuff? Which, you know, are I'm not saying are invalid, but um, I'm curious from 
everyone else's perspective. Like, you know, what, it, what is the goal if this were to move? Like, what, what are people hoping to do? Mm. I could respond to that, but I'd actually really like to hear from in response to that, that point specifically from Mike. Huh? Or did you want to make a reply to Mike's comment? I think uh, uh, the question to be asked then to move away uh, from the bike shedding is, uh, um, is there a need for a comops team? You know, what would be the, the purpose of the comops team? And basically what we already defined is uh, to enable uh, different teams uh, um, um, to work together and, or to bring teams together basically to help uh, people out. And I think that need is there, that is, that is real. And there is no... Uh, um, um, there's no good, uh, um, um, I need to choose my words carefully, uh, toes are long these days. Um, there's no good part in the community where you can turn to if you, uh, if you get stuck. Then it's usually asking different people uh, around on, uh, until someone steps in and gets it unstuck. And I think that's exactly the idea behind the, uh, the ComOps team to... Um, to have a body to turn to, uh, we need to uh, bring people together to um, keep, uh, keep things going. And that's also what I was trying to refer to with my uh, analogy to the uh, cement in the brakes and the oil in the engine. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes stuff gets stuck and it needs to get unstuck. And that's uh, uh, usually a hard part uh, within the community um, um, currently. Kind of feeling like maybe the why com ops part hasn't been clearly articulated. I'm not sure if that's. Uh, it's not why. It's, uh, I feel we need to emphasize more on. Take the mic. Uh, so I guess we need to emphasize more on why uh, the, the value for com ops to the entire contributors. Like, why would we want to have contributor investment in comops to make to make more sense? Think about it this way: that when we add anything in this org chart, it is to either expand the project in a direction or get quality of life better, or in some ways make a meaning out of this particular group. So, one of those things that we probably need to understand or talk about is how comops can actually benefit the larger community. So if we are doing storytelling, should we be doing storytelling for like, and the approach how to get the pieces out? Mm. Do Robert come back to Sean maybe? And then Aoife? Okay. Mm. So one thing I would just add, and, and I'll, I'll think of it in my DEI mind, so some of the things that ComOps is doing is very much around, you know, about contributors, right? So I'll think of it from Fedora Pride, right? We want to make sure that everyone has a safe space who is in our community, right? The same thing for the accessibility team or Fedora Women or anyone in DEI. It's kind of an overlap. It's, you know, making sure contributors have a safe journey it's kind of in a different mindset. It's more about the work you do at Fedora, like what you're volunteering and contributing in. But you know, in the DEI side, it's kind of a, a little bit different. Our, our focus is more about you know specific community issues. But in some cases, ComOps is more about the community as a whole. So I'd actually kind of agree with what Matthew was saying just a moment ago is ComOps and DEI are kind of, in some cases, an overlap. Because I would care from a Fedora Pride perspective uh, are we losing contributors? I wouldn't want to know how many of those joined the Fedora Pride SIG and you know was contributing, and then you know they're leaving. You know, was it a you know a, a contribution issue somewhere? Right? They struggled to get information or something like that. Right? And mm. maybe could as DEI could we have provided more support? So. Just taking notes. All right, I'm going to take a look at Matrix. Mike, okay. Now, my confused face was just about the, like, whether it should be under here or under here. I guess I just don't know what logistically it means for it to be, like, I know what it means 
for me to be under my manager in ASPO in Red Hat. Like, I report to him, he gives me performance reviews, he approves my budget. Like, uh, what is it, what, what's the logistical difference of ComOps? Do they report into Mindshare Committee versus reporting to council? Do they, like, what's different? In so yeah, there. Um, although we have, it's been a challenge to do it this way. We have had efforts to have like reports of what's going on in the project wrap up in in this structure. So there is actually that re literal reporting structure, not in terms of like who does your paycheck, but where the reports go. Like that. That, that there is. Uh, it's very hard to do that, even when um, you're. When, you, when your paycheck is on the line, but um, even for volunteers it's been hard to do, but, but that's the idea for reporting. But also I think just for the like, uh, where that group is supposed to have impact, I think just putting it there on the chart makes a little bit of a difference. Um, part of this, the, of the why to me uh, is, I, there's, there's two things. One is uh, from the Fedora Council point of view, um, the Fedora Council is comprised of people, you know, a couple of people like me and Justin who are hired to you know, do, our, do our jobs there, but also people who come from these other parts to kind of connect things together at the top, which is, which is good, but it also means it's people who don't have a lot of time to do things. So when we've got like the council should do this, or we, have, we, we often have ideas, or people come to us with ideas, and then we have no um, actually doing it branch of the, of the council. So to me, in some ways, ComOps could be the, um, I don't know, what's what's the right term, but the the actual the executive. Exa yeah, I, I I didn't want to get too much. I didn't want to get too much into like the structure of the U.S. government into it. But yeah, it's the it's what, yeah the implementation arm of the council or the council. Like, Here's some things we'd like to do, and somewhere we can hand them where there's people like, oh yeah, we'd like to work on this, or else you know tell us that uh, can't do that or whatever. But just like. So a place the council can delegate things. That would that would be a really strong why for me because we don't have that. And the second one is actually more personal for Justin, uh, which is um, when Ben and Justin and I were kind of talking about the role when he was first hired. That we we did some whiteboarding about like what our how our roles exist and overlap. And we did there was a comment somewhere that I'm not the CEO of Fedora, which is absolutely true. Um, but in terms of analogy of where my job sits and what I do, it kind of is like that chief executive officer kind of position where it's um, everything that happens is my fault ultimately in some ways. Um, and it's kind of that's um, a, a lot of those sort of roles. And uh, Ben saw the, the program manager role um, as a basically chief operations officer. And that's actually why we went with um, Fedora operations architect for the a possible new job like that, and it, and it yeah, this has got some um, secret stuff on it, Justin. So don't show that with everybody. Don't read it with fine print. Um, but um, yeah, uh, his, that role was was fairly well focused, uh, much more than mine, and far much more than the uh, F cake or FCA role, which, in you know, the corporate analogy is you know, uh, chief people officer, chief marketing officer. Uh, CFO, actually financial officer, like there's like, I don't know, five or six uh, imaginary C-level titles we could put on this role. So that's a whole lot. So it felt like, wow, that's too much. Um, and maybe it would be nice to have a team that could help support some of those things. It doesn't necessarily need to be com ops, but that's um, just all that stuff kind of needs support, and that's that's much more vague than the first thing, but that's part of the why from my point of view also. And maybe ComOps is an answer to all of them, but ComOps hopefully can be the answer to some of it. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna shortly get into the in last interactive portion of this, so we will go, I think is it Mike, Aoife, Ingwin P? Mike so we'll do those last few. Mike and has then declined we'll his questions, he's sick of being ignored. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, just just a short observation and maybe as a possible output for this session. So we began the session like with people giving what they think that the ComOps team does. And I said that it surprised me that I was expecting it to be more 
technically mechanical focused and there was an awful lot of the soft skills, which is a wonderful team to have, but it's quite hard to scale, which sounds like it's one of the core problems. Not to say you should reduce you know, your, your soft skill mentoring and, and support, but sometimes it's hard to be both. And if you're missing your main primary focus, how are people supposed to know what you do? In every other kind of governing body that we saw on that, that diagram, you can tell Fedora Council is governance. You can tell that FESCO is uh, technical steering or engineering or steer, technical steering, etc. We now know Mindshare is more administrative and budgetary, etc. If you can't list what your, your group does in one sentence, you're doing too much. So maybe as an output for this, is, the, is it, would it be feasible to get some sort of like mission statement or vision or a simplified, this is who we are and this is what we do. And then obviously there are layers down to that. So operations mightn't be, there, there, there's many meanings to that, but a main core tenement of the group. That's a great point. And uh, you are all gonna help us draft that in just a couple minutes here. Thanks for the idea. Uh, I just want to check, uh, Penguin P or Mike, do you, do you have any? All okay? Okay. okay. I, want to, I still want to hear your answer to my question, but you can save that until after. The why? Or? Yeah, the why, why move it? Why mm. move it? Why are you trying to do So a, a comment about moving the com ops team around and like does it make sense of it under something else or on the higher part? Uh, part, part of that being about a visibility and uh, making some of that work more supported at higher levels of the project, if I'm summarizing that right? So Amy mentioned about the OpenStack uh, governance board and how they've structured it with some of their, their teams. So I know you want to be mindful of time. We're in the last uh, 15, 20 minutes here. So what we're going to do is, uh, by show of hands, how many of you know what a uh, community initiative is, formerly known as objectives? It's like, OK, like 25%, I'd say. OK. So if you don't know what these are, we are going to ha ask you to help us draft some of the mission statements or high level goals of a initiative for community operations. Uh, if I can remember the, it'll redirect me. Yes. So what are community initiatives? I will summarize this for you in that whenever we're trying to do a big thing in Fedora that usually involves working with lots of teams and lots of people and might take anywhere from 12 to 18 months, we encourage people to do it as a initiative, community initiative, formerly objectives. Put. Oh. Uh, is that better? Yes. Okay. Thanks for that. So, uh, you know, again, uh, the. Uh, Every community initiative has a designated community initiative lead. It can be a group of people. We've had co-leads for these before. The logistics aren't so important, but the important thing to take away is we're, you know, this is like a 12 to 18 month timeline for doing work, doing like big work in the Fedora community. So without getting into the nuance here, I'm just pointing this out as, as what the structure is, but what I'd like each of you to help us draft is what are, based on all this discussion we've been having in here, what are top level goals or objectives that you would like the community operations team or you think the community operations team should address in this reboot revival. So I think, do we still have, is that, we maybe do some more sticky notes. I don't know if everyone is exhausted on their sticky notes. I see a few. Do we have the big pad? Where did the big pad of stickies go? I do not have it. Do you still have the big pad, Sumantro? Anybody need 
need stickies. That does not have like. Okay. Community. Community effort. I love it. Okay. Yeah. So it is 1211 right now. We'll take, this one might be a little more thoughtful. So we'll take like six, seven minutes. We'll come back at 1218 or so. We'll give us seven minutes to kind of discuss what we all have here. So. What? Really? Did I mistype it? Okay. We, we won't hold you for lunch. We won't, we won't uh, keep your appetite, but we'll just take like six to eight minutes here and just write down what things, based on our discussion today, what things do you think should be top level goals or objectives of a community operations and community initiative? If you do have any questions, just you know, pop your hand. You can come up, and if you're done, you can come and put them up on the, the flip chart in the front.
think if I were to ask you that, I would expect that answer to be yeah. yes. Makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's helpful for people after the session to be able to hear the two of them and then for the ones that aren't like very concrete to yeah. try to dig a little deeper. Yeah.
done, done, done causing leg injuries. Okay, we're going to bring it back up five, we got five minutes. So we're going to do five minutes to go through uh, the future, destiny, and uh, fate of ComOps in five minutes. Let's go. So while we were, uh, while there was the chatter, Sumantro and I were going through and grouping the stickies again. We've got a few that we want to ask some questions about, but we were roughly able to put them in four buckets of work and then life advice column of general tips and tricks. Um, I don't think, we probably don't have time to read all of them, but the four buckets we came up with was the co one common theme was around processes, the creation, documentation, and maintenance of how collaboration works and making sure that those things are clear. The second theme is around, I'd say, outreach and engagement, making sure that you're not just having processes, but people are, uh, know about them and are empowered to do things with those. Uh, there was the metrics one, uh, metrics and data science piece. And then one that was kind of on its own, which we, we did want to ask on that one. So in the first one, we'll start, we'll go left to right on these. We've got three under the um, processes, how to do things bucket. And I'm going to read out the sticky note. And all we want to know for these ones is like, just clarify what you wrote, just to get your perspective on this. So the first one we wanted to ask, someone wrote managing organizational and project processes. That was Aoife. <laughs> so give us, give us the juice. And because we're tight on time, yep. a few sentences. Yep. I'll be as quick as I can. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Stop interrupting me. Uh, OK, so um, the Fedora project has many processes and things like that. And it's basically just around standardizing on them, making sure that either they all, like if there's wiki pages, if that's what we're using, or Fedora docs or something, and they, they have a coherent kind of template. And they're up to date. They don't go stale. So just managing that upkeep. Maintenance work. Yeah. Not necessarily writing them, but making sure they're written correctly. Yes. So the next one we had was execution on strategic plans, per <laughs> parentheses, project management, PGM. That kind of goes to what Matthew mentioned around um, the, Fedora pro the Fedora Council needing a group of uh, our team to execute on plans and stuff. So. I have a triage one as well, so if you want me to run through that one too, I can. But basically, it's if the Fedora Council has some um, initiatives or objectives that they want to execute on, then the community operations team does seem like a logical choice to execute on those plans. Again, not doing the work, but shepherding the work, overseeing the work, making sure the work is happening and that there's like a, a reporting structure in place or accountability. They're just that linchpin that a project manager or a program manager would often play. Perfect. Next one is determine and quantify the roles and responsibilities of ComOps so as to remain focused and head off scope creep. Is that a familiar? Who is our author of this one? Unless they. It wasn't me, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were curious on that one because there was the quantify keyword in there, and we just wanted to understand that, but maybe our, our author was too hungry. So all good. The, the next one, so in the second column around, which was general ones around engagement, uh, the, this one, we, I think we wanted to understand the diversity piece on it. It just says enhance engagement and diversity. I don't know, do we have the author of that one in the room? Dang, we should have front loaded all these stickies. All the people had the controversial ones. I wrote it and then they left. Damn. Uh, and then the last one that we just wanted to clarify is manage cross organizational infrastructures. Uh, bullet points, community metrics, Fed message, Fedora blog, Fedora policy docs. Uh, that was mine. So, in a few sentences, you know, uh, ComOps is a cross organizational team, right? It's kind of meant to work. It'd be the glue, someone said, right? Mm. So any infrastructure that is assisting in that, whether it's like whether it's fed message or if you're running Grimoire Lab, or if you have other infrastructures like technical infrastructures that kind of are helping glue all these communities together, 
I would say a cross organizational team like ComOps would be a good place to put that. Mm -hmm. I know there's probably a lot of that and to like dump it all on your laps would probably make your brain explode and you know be bad, but that was sort of my thought. Well, that's, that's really interesting because I would say that from my perspective that ComOps should own those things, but perhaps we should find a uh, CPE friend to be our co-objective uh, lead or someone who could help us rep that side of the house. I had I exactly the same thought. That sounded more like the definition of CPE. So it seems like working with the right stakeholder is a key part, right? Because that, that infrastructure is important. It's community platform engineering team at Red Hat that basically yeah, is the... We, we should not be saying CPE here. We should be saying Fedora infrastructure. So CPE is a Red Hat team that a, one of their uh, remits is to work on Fedora infrastructure, Fedora and CentOS infrastructure. Um, and uh, there's been a little bit of conflation, um, not badly intentioned, but just um, over the last few years. And I want to make sure we keep that separate so let's not accidentally do that and add more confusion. Um, yeah, in for team. Yeah, that's, that, that's what's meant. Um, yeah, it wouldn't necessarily have to be somebody, for example, who is a Red Hat or on the CPE team to do this. Uh, so one of the comments I wanted to add over there is, uh, I, I think I attended a talk yesterday. So some of these apps that was mentioned over there, they already fall as a part of crit critical one or two. In that case, any which way Fedora Infra takes care of it. But if there is something that is not, like a Grimoire lab would not probably fall under it, but CentOS and Fedora can both benefit from it. That's the ecosystem stuff. In that case, yeah. So we'll do Aoife, Robert, and lunch. This would be really quick. Just to kind of like, <laughs> it, just to compliment what Samantha was saying and like where those kind of, where that help would, would lie. Yeah, the, the, the CPE team, the community platform engineering team that Red Hat, um, that Red Hat sponsors pays for, like, there's a couple of us on the salary. Um, we do take care of a lot of those applications, but the Fedora infrastructure team is not just CPE, it's, it's community folks, but the ComOps team would be a very interesting team to be able to like know the, the processes to get tickets opened in the CPE team that the, the infrastructure is failing for whatever reason in, the, in that. So maybe there's just a bit better synergy uh, needed between maybe the ComOps and the internal Red Hat teams. All right. Well, we are pretty much at time, so I don't want to hold you from your lunch. But before we wrap, I did just want to give a, a huge appreciation and thanks to my co-presenter because I was buried in all the flock things and did not get to put a lot of time in the organizing end of this and Sumantro owned a lot of that and in addition to this session he's also been doing a lot of it for the last two years with the outreach revamp together with Mariana Bala and Marie Norden so I just wanted to acknowledge that all the work that Sumantro has done yeah and Sumantro, Mariana and Marie specifically because as you saw in the org chart, there's a lot of history. It's a very big thing, and it's, it's hard work. And I'm appreciative of the work that people like Sumantra is doing. I'm thankful for all of you for spending, some of you have been here since nine with me. Others of you just joined for this session. So thank you for your time, and enjoy your lunch. <laughs>